go and do likewise. There is in this parable of the Good Samaritan a dig. The professionals pass by, no doubt in a hurry to get to the temple, but they miss God. We can do the same. The word neighbour is linked with the word nigh, nearby. In German, the same root is there, Nachbar, the same meaning, person right next to us. The Greek, Plesion, means the very next person. And it comes through in the Latin equivalent of Proximus, right next. Le prochain, same root in French, proche is nearby. And so, there's no excuse. We can give charity to somebody at a distance in some dark African country and miss the Lord right next to us. The Focolari movement has a great spirituality of Jesus forsaken, Gesù abbandonato. They really emphasize the poor Jesus. And here he is, abandoned by all except the most unlikely. As in the case of the lepers who came back and prostrated himself at the feet of Jesus in profound thanksgiving, the Samaritan. And who was it that had access to the heart of our Saviour alone? at the well, the well of Jacob, not the privileged Jews, but the outcast, that Samaritan woman, who actually then became in her own way an evangelizer. Come and see the one who told me all that I ever did. Could he be the Messiah? The Jews and the professionals Missed the point. Crucify him. And we can actually do the same. We can miss Jesus when he comes to the door and we go and answer it with a severe face. The same with the phone. We can be sure that the person picks it up straight away. It's Jesus coming to the door. As St. Vincent de Paul insisted, if one is called from prayer, when the Lord comes in the unexpected call, one is leaving God for God. And it is in that poor representative of God that he'll be found at that point, not staying in a false consideration of our own making. And therefore a certain elasticity is needed. I have met over the years people who are very good in their spirituality but are not quite so good at handling the unprogrammed. That is to say, it works well enough when it has been already controlled when we have programmed what is to happen and when. But they're not always quite so adaptable when it comes to Jesus coming out of the blue. It's important because life is like that. We don't program it. We receive it. And after all, his language is the language of his providence. God speaks through the event. Alas, if only I'd listened to that, I think to myself now, years after, when information, right at the beginning in France, I was warned, 
in confession by a holy, holy trappist that God speaks through events. It's important to read that language and not to force the event. Even should we make a blunder, God is in also the redressing of the blunder. The will of God follows us. Remember the abbot teaching us that. The will of God follows us in our blunders. That is to say that he picks up the pieces there where he've landed. We've landed ourselves. There is a will of God even in the blunder, in the way out of it. All is not lost. And as we're taught through the mystic experience of funeral Norwich, all shall be well, God writes straight with crooked lines. And sometimes the blunder can be a grace because it can teach us emptiness, which is the point of encounter. When we're full and programming the universe, we don't need God, do we? And so, charity is not an illusion. It's extremely concrete. And the litmus test is how do I handle Jesus in the very next one? Like Thérèse of Lisieux, who managed to practice heroic charity, nothing noisy or spectacular, to such an extent that the nun who had the gift of displeasing her in all hadn't a clue. In fact, she thought she was the most beloved of all the sisters to Thérèse. Years later, she asked, but who was that sister who used to annoy her in everything? And the priest said, Ma sœur, c'était vous. Sister, it was you. That is heroic sanctity. Authentic and hurting. Us and not our victim. Caritas et amor, ubi caritas Deus ibi est, ubi caritas et amor, ubi caritas Deus ibi